Hey everybody, how we doing today? Beautiful day here in the Florida Keys. Today I'm going to be showing you my island. And if you look out that direction, that's Marathon Keys and that's where I live now. So we're just coming up on the Seven Mile Bridge. Uh, this is to the west of uh, Marathon Key. I actually just came back from Key West, picking up a batch of CUDA tubes. So I'm finally be back in stock there. But I figured this is kind of the iconic way to kind of introduce you to the island. Uh, this is the beginning of the Seven Mile Bridge and you can kind of figure what that means. It's basically seven miles from this point all the way across to Marathon. So here we go. because either side are lined with the uh, fishing bridge so you can actually walk out there and do some bridge fishing. This is the uh, Atlantic side and then we've got the Gulf side in the back country out that way and basically seven miles of bridge and then you can kind of see the mainland there or the island and then that's Marathon and we've got a bit of an arch here for those tall sailboats and then you can get a better view of the uh, Marathon landmass. There it is popping up on the right there. That's a better shot of it. And that's Marathon. Here we are, I made it across the Seven Mile Bridge. And welcome to Marathon, Florida. Speed limit 35, nice. Alrighty, so today's video, I'm just gonna kinda give you a, a lay of the land of my new home base here in Marathon, Florida. Um, I moved from Key West, which is mile marker zero, uh, basically to the mainland or Key Largo, it's basically about 110, 120 miles. And uh, Marathon sits at mile marker roughly 55, so kind of right in the middle there. Uh, I figure the best way to kind of give you guys an, just a general overview of the island and the vicinity around it is to kind of do a bit of a virtual tour. Um, then I'll hop on my bicycle, use my motorcycle, and even my car because it's pretty stretched out. Uh, Marathon itself is basically 13 to 14 miles long. Um, it's a few different islands combined together to form the actual Marathon. So it is a bit stretched out. It's actually, all it is, is a one road town, which happens to be a uh, highway, and then a bunch of branches, just kind of like a fish skeleton. The, the main uh, spine going right down the middle, and then a bunch of ribs going off of it is basically the layout. But uh, I'll give you a quick uh, tour of the town and then in future videos uh, I'll do a little bit more in depth on things as we start looking for places to launch, places to fish and all the other stuff that goes around with making the videos. So let's get started. But before we get started I want to introduce you to a new or actually an old special guest probably haven't seen for a while behind the curtains of mystery here. Da -da 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 -da. Bram! The Board of Knowledge is back! <laughs> now that I have access to walls and stuff, uh, this actually fit perfectly in there, my dry erase board. Uh, behind this is one of the wraparound windows and the sun comes directly in it on the morning and creates my oven effect. So this works out good that I'll have my uh, board here and it'll really help out in these upcoming videos where I'm going to have a lot more of how, to, how to's and explanations on what's going on and so forth. So. Uh, Boom! The Board of Knowledge is back! Alright, let's start our virtual tour of my new island. Um, for those that aren't familiar with it, we're part of the United States. We're actually located right about there. Um, let's zoom in there. We're part of the state of Florida. 
and we're in the southernmost area there. Uh, this is the southern edge of the mainland Florida there. And then this is US-1 that comes along all these islands and there's connected by a bunch of different bridges all the way through until you hit uh, Key West is the southernmost point or my, where I used to live. Here's a breakdown of the main islands to get familiar with it. So right after you leave the mainland, you run into Key Largo. Uh, Marathon is my new home. And then you have Key West, which is basically mile marker zero. So from Key West to Key Largo, it's basically 110 miles. And then I'm at basically mile marker 50, 55-ish. So I'm right in the middle there. Now when it comes to fishing, this map actually will be kind of important in regards to the layout of where Marathon is here. You've got Key West to the bottom left, Key Largo to the right. You'll see all of this uh, area here is kind of considered the backcountry. So you have all these islands and cuts and channels all along these. And this is actually considered the lower keys, basically from Big Pine to Key West. Then you go to this open swath of land where you basically have the Gulf of Mexico meeting at the bridge and connecting directly with the Atlantic side there with no other structure, no islands, no really nothing much else except these few islands here that make up the middle keys. And then once you get up to here, you're talking about the upper keys, which is Isla Mirada, Plantation, Key Largo. Then you've got the Atlantic, and then you've got the, the bay here because you have the Everglades, the mainland Florida up top here. And then this creates kind of a bay here with a lot of little islands, cut channels, and uh, a lot of flats areas built in right here which is also considered a kind of a backcountry uh, location. So when you start seeing these uh, three totally different areas there, that'll come up in regards to the type of fishing that we'll be doing down in those middle keys. Now, Marathon itself is actually fairly long. It runs about 14 miles starting to the far west at the beginning or the end of the Seven Mile Bridge, and then through all the way to Tom's Harbor Cut, or the last island, which is Grassy Key. Um, you can kind of see where the, uh, this is Vaca Cut. It's kind of, of almost a centering dividing line. It's basically the only channel that runs between the Gulf and the Atlantic through this actual marathon here. Um, but you'll notice that it's heavily populated to the west of that Vaca Cut, where there's like wall-to-wall -wall buildings and uh, houses. And then to the right, it's kind of uh, quite a bit less populated. Uh, the one exception is here, which is Key Colony Beach. That's actually a separate entity, a separate city in itself, not uh, connected with Marathon. But that's the general layout of actual Marathon. When I speak of Marathon, and a lot of the descriptions I'll be doing will be from the west of this Vaca Cut. You can kind of see this is where I live. Um, and then the more populated areas over here. Uh, but that's kind of more when I talk about Marathon, this area here. All right, this is a close-up of the more Marathon proper I was talking about. Up here in the right corner is the Vaca Cut channel that cuts through the middle of Marathon. And you can see this western side is this very much heavily populated area of Marathon. This is where you're going to find most of the businesses, most of the residentials. Um, as I was describing before, it's very similar to a skeleton of a fish. You have US-1 passing right through the middle of it. And then you have all these spines just going from perpendicular with US-1. You have all these roads that go from US-1 to the ocean, US-1 to the ocean on both the Gulf and the Atlantic side. Um, also, we have this Southern Peninsula here. And this is basically Sombrero Beach, which is kind of the Key West uh, sister beach area to uh, have like a uh, Smathers Beach there in Key West. But uh, for what we're going to do today on our little tour, um, I live up in this uh, far east area here. I'm just going to take a quick bike ride around, show you back at Cut, show you just a kind of just a little corner of it, but it's fairly much, pretty much the same all the way down this US-1 corridor. Then I'll uh, switch to the motorcycle because it's too hot and too long to be pedaling my bicycle in the middle of the day. 
And then uh, we'll take a ride down US-1 real quick so you can kind of just see the general layout to the end. And then we'll run on back, stopping at a few different uh, highlighted areas that involve me on a daily basis. And then we'll pick up the car and then I'll take you a drive down to Sombrero Beach so you can kind of check that out. So uh, and that'll make up our uh, little tour of marathon. All right, let's get old clanky and get on the road here. Still surviving. I live right next to the Florida Keys Mosquito Control, but I still get mosquitoes. What's up with that? It is nice, I'm right next to a subway, so I always got quick food, somewhat healthy. True value hardware, another nice thing to have close by. I've been buying stuff there, fixing up stuff. This is the older Walgreens, still a nice big one. I'm not sure if it's a 24 hour one or not, but there's actually a newer one on the other side of town, but. Got a Beals outlet. I only buy a new pair of shorts every two years, so not a huge need, but it's there if I need one. What's really nice to have is this Dollar Tree. Very nice Dollar Tree, fully stocked versus Key West where it's always wiped out, just like a massacre. This one I've seen tons of stuff that uh, never seen before in a Dollar Tree, so it's nice. Nice cashier, so that's good. 24 hour gym if I ever decide to get in shape. Wondering how this bagel place does. It's kind of hidden back here. Got the 24 hour gas option, which is nice. I'm just kind of taking a back route. US 1 is just right there. And we're just heading over to my starting point, but there is one other spot, which was a, kind of a letdown for me. Sad. I wouldn't mind a Burger King if it was open, but I think this got wiped out during Irma and same like Key West, they didn't rebuild it. They ended up just selling them. No Burger King. No Domino's to add to that. That was weird, not having a dominated Domino's. Here's one of the 20 banks here in Marathon. I don't know what the deal is with that. Money laundering. And we got a straight shot to our final beginning destination up front here. Oh, actually, I want to show you one other thing here. My biggest letdown for moving down here. Oh, there's this little strip mall here. And there was a post office, but because of the coronavirus, it's closed. I think it's closed. Nobody. Oh, that was gonna make things so nice because uh, just a couple blocks away, I could drop off all my all about the bait orders, but now I have to go all the way across Marathon to get to the main post office. A little bit of a hassle. It'd been so nice to have it right there. All right, let's go hit my starting point up here. Lots of animal hospitals. And the SPCA back in where I live. This big old thing. Capitalize on the uh, lots of uh, housing turnover. Need furniture. And if you don't want to drive up to Miami. I don't know how they're doing. I've never seen anybody parked in here. There's another shopping center that didn't quite recover from uh, Irma. I think these guys are open. That side sure isn't. That got hammered. 
haven't quite seen anybody in these places either. Oh, they're just closed for now. It's nice to have an automotive repair shop place. Now that I don't have old Rusty to fix up, not so necessary anymore. Got this thing. I don't know what the deal. Aquarium of counters. I never really paid attention to it till I moved here. Another one, I don't know if they're open or not. I've never seen anybody in there. Looks like a pretty big complex. But this is our starting point right up here. This, my friends, is Vaca Cut. This is the water highway that cuts through the Keys from the Gulf to the Atlantic. It's the only one versus going all the way six or seven miles to the Seven Mile Bridge or way up there to, uh, I don't even know, on the east side. Tons of water flow. This will be a great fishing spot uh, for nighttime. There's always people out fishing here. There's tons of tarpon around here, juvenile tarpon. So this is my great escape at nighttime. Just come over here, check the water levels. A lot of fishies down there. Seeing what's going on. You can see by all the uh, lures and fishing line that are wrapped in the uh, power lines there. It gets hit a lot. But I come out at night time and oh, there's bait all in there. There's pilchards all over it. That's why. Oh, a ton of pilchards. Uh, that's why I come over here at night time, be able to just kind of see things and look at all the tarpon rolling in the lights. Wow, man, that thing was just full of pilchards. Nice. All right, I'm just gonna go down to the bottom, cross over the US-1 and then come back up this way. That's the Atlantic side, so you can check it out. This is basically my bike ride I do every night just to kind of get out, check out things are. But this is a raging river here. It pushes a ton of water because it's the only cut through through this whole 10 mile stretch. So all the water has to come through here from the high tide, low tide. Let's get moving. Now Marathon officially keeps going on for about another five or plus miles, but I consider kind of that back of cut the uh, cutoff point. An old Royal Hawaiian Motel Botel. I don't think that's open. I haven't seen anybody there. A lot of stuff is just closed down. I don't know, partially because of Irma and partially because it's not worth it. All right, let's get across here. Ooh. A lot of churches around here as well. Churches, churches everywhere. facing the Gulf side. There's a little bit of access to do some fishing down here. And that is the Atlantic Ocean out that way. Fishing, fishing, fishing. All right, I don't know where to go.
know, we've got the dive shop. Marathon lady party boat. I think they're out and about. Something to do if you don't have your own boat. Here's what they call the gas station. Best chum prices in Marathon. That's what I hear. Got gas as well. A lot of, lot of tackle shops here versus like Key West where there's only a couple. Here there's a lot of them. And more banks. Banks, banks everywhere. Washing that cash. A few restaurants and pizza places. A lot of kayak and uh, board rental places, which is nice. All right, that is my side of the island. I think we're gonna cross back and then uh, pick up either the motorcycle or the car and then head on down to uh, the main body on the west side of Marathon. Check that out. It's not such a relaxing ride uh, coming through here on a freeway. Ah, winning. All right, let's take the old moto and cover some ground. So this corner also marks the be or the beginning or the end of the airport. And that goes on for miles that way. Pretty interesting to have, but makes for a boring bike ride. So let's head on down past that.
And that's the whole right hand side is basically just an airfield. So that's about half of this part of Marathon is just the airport. Makes it kind of bland on this side of the road, but it is what it is. So we're going to keep on heading down.
right, we've made it to the far west end. This is basically the lookout point um, and then the entrance way to the old bridge that they're doing on construction on it. But that's basically the beginning of the seven mile bridge and then the flow from the Gulf to the Atlantic. Gulf of Mexico there, nice and beautiful. We don't have this beautiful park area down on my side of Marathon. That would be nice. But uh, the reason why I wanted to bring you all the way down here, this side of the Marathon, like the airport side, is pretty unremarkable. For some reason, most everything is on the uh, south side of the street, but we'll turn around and then uh, hit a couple places that are important to me. But beautiful view. Now, the reason why I stopped at this gas station, kind of pointed it out for uh, just to show a little bit of price variables. Uh, I remember moving from Key West to Marathon right at the beginning of uh, July, before the 4th of July. Got the rental truck, drove up my stuff, and I remember checking the gas station in Key West. It was like 240, 239, 240, something like that. And I get up to Marathon, and I was coming back, to, you know, wanted to fill up while I was up here because I figured it was cheaper. Buck 99. I was like, what? What the heck? That much difference just from that distance. And even here inside Marathon, on my side of the island, on the east side, it's $2.09. But on the west side, it was $2.15, $2.16 a gallon. But uh, that was the last gas station as you leave Marathon going to Key West or the first one as you come into town. So I think they take advantage of it. But then as you go farther down the Keys, it gets considerably more expensive. Um, another example was uh, my um, Comcast internet service. Uh, I had to switch it over from Key West to Marathon. So uh, I had called them up and said, uh, here's my old address, here's my new address. I just want to transfer service. Uh, he goes, oh, let me check it out, check the new address. He's, oh, I'm sorry, we don't offer that package uh, in uh, the new address. Uh, so I'm like, oh, instantly got on my defense if I figure they're gonna say, oh, uh, you were paying $65 back in Key West, but here we have to sign you up for the new package, so it's gonna be a hundred bucks or whatever. So I'm ready to go to war on them, just like, no, screw that, screw you guys, at and I wanna go for them. So he goes, oh, let me check. So he goes and checks, boom, boom. Okay, we've got this package, $50. I'm like, $50? I say, well, what is it, a slower speed or what is it? He goes, no, same speed, same unlimited, it's just a different package for Marathon where you're gonna be at. So I said, no difference, but it's $15, $20 cheaper. He goes, yeah, that's what it is. I said, all right, that'll work. Sign me up. So I changed it over and we're good there. So that's just a, like the kind of a pricing as you start moving down the keys, things get more expensive. Uh, just like the housing part of it. Um, although in here I'm paying a little bit more, but I'm getting four to five times the square footage uh, than I was in Key West. And then when I lived in Key Largo, uh, the place I was staying is actually, as I think about it, pretty much the same square footage, same layout as I had in Key West, but I was paying a little over half the price in Key Largo for what I was paying in Key West. So big differences as you move down the line. We got a full-on Home Depot, which is nice. Definitely not as busy as Key West, which is also very nice. A lot less chance of uh, picking up the plague over here. But yeah, I shop here quite a bit for a lot of stuff, surprisingly.
U.S. Post Office. I'm here every day dropping stuff off. They unfortunately don't have a package drop off. This is the new Walgreens. We still got a Kmart here like in Key West, but I don't think this one's going to be surviving for much, much longer. It used to have a nice fishing uh, section, but that's gone now. Nice mural. And then the uh, Wind Dixie over here, that's our newly remodeled one after Irma. They expanded it and redid the whole thing. So it's actually really nice. That's where I buy my groceries. I don't go to Publix, too many people. That's packed. Looks like they're closed. No, there's someone in there. Sweet savannas. That's probably the biggest hot spot in the marathon. Definitely have a big following.
And here's the Atlantic Ocean. That's Vaca Cut there. All right, let's head on back. We've jumped into the car so I could do a little bit of commentary for this last spot. So now we're going to head over to our local beach or park, kind of like Key West had uh, Higgs Beach and Smathers Beach. Uh, they've got their own over here, so we're going to go check it out. All right, we are on our way to Sombrero Beach. It's kind of out of a sort of a peninsula facing out into the uh, Atlantic. So you gotta drive kind of far in here. But uh, this will give you a good idea of the uh, sort of neighborhoods around here once you get off of the main US-1. Uh, especially these uh, newer houses that were built after the last couple of hurricanes. So everything is pretty much stilted and on canals. Finding a house in uh, Marathon that isn't stilted <laughs> And on a canal is probably harder. But this is kind of your typical setup. Just a standard marathon neighborhood. Here's the high school, which is very nice. Kind of like the West one. Pretty similar. I wonder if it's a hurricane shelter as well. And here's the old Sombrero Beach Park. Nice layout there. Looks like it's all locked up. It might be just permanently closed for coronavirus. Round about kayak launch. Let's see how they get that blocked off. Oh, they got that gated as well. Screwed. And we'll take a look. Some boats out there. <sighs> the dog park and the uh, kayak launch area. But you can't get to the beach. Well, that is the Marathon's kind of go-to beach all locked up. Uh, not the big social outdoor gatherings like uh, Key West does. It's so spread out as you saw. 
So I don't know what people do around here. I don't see a lot of people out and about. So after six, it's pretty closed down. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and head on back. All right, so there's a kind of a quick overview of Marathon Florida, my new island. Uh, I'll definitely be getting into more detailed videos about certain aspects of, as we start getting ready and geared up to get to some fishing. Uh, so uh, we'll check out more spots like uh, launch areas and place to access actually getting to the water, bait spots, and then the, the farther vicinities around the actual marathon. So those will be coming up soon. But uh, anyways, I uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching. And I will see you next video. Bye.